Ciao guys, welcome back to my channel. So, more than 10 years ago, these two guys, Tom Davenport and DJ Patil, they made a statement that has become quite iconic in the tech industry. They said that data science is the sexiest job in the 21st century. Now, despite the very provocative headline, it is actually true that more and more companies are using artificial intelligence, machine learning, and data science more in general, to basically try to improve the business and become better companies overall. And this is why the demand for the data scientist role has increased dramatically in the past years. For those of you who are new to the channel, I'm Laura, I'm a data analyst based in London. And since I started working within the data space, I've always been very, very interested about data science in general. But the problem is that the more you read about data science, and the more it can get confusing. So what? In today's video, I'm gonna try to shed some lights on what it really means to be a data scientist because I work with them on a daily basis and also because I do myself a lot of data science related tasks at work. So I will start from a very generic definition of data science. Then I will try to explain why there is so much confusion about this role. And then we will deep dive into what it really means to be a data scientist. So if any of this sounds interesting, make sure to stick around till the end. Also, if you're interested about this type of content, subscribe because I'm definitely going to make much more videos around data science and data analytics. So without further ado, let's jump into it. So when we look for a generic definition of data scientist, we will probably find that uh, a data scientist is trying to make as much impact as possible within an organization, obviously using data. And in order to do that, they use a combination of statistics, maths, computer science, and to basically build complex algorithms and models in order to create custom analysis. And even though it's not the easiest thing to do, if we try to summarize what a data scientist is doing in a sentence, we can say that a data scientist is trying to solve real business problems using predictive analytics and therefore using data from the past to basically trying to predict the future. And this is actually what makes a data scientist different from a data analyst like myself, because what we do is actually using descriptive analytics which means using data from the past, but in order to understand the past and present of an organization. Now, I quickly want to cover why there is so much misconception about the data scientist role. And probably there are two main reasons. So one reason is definitely around the media. So we read all the time in the news about machine learning and artificial intelligence, and we are all kind of scared that one day machines will take over. And this is actually overshadowing many more aspects around uh, data science that maybe are a bit more boring. And this is why now the general public thinks that a data scientist is basically just dealing with AI, artificial intelligence and machine learning. Well, actually, the reality is that many companies hire data scientists that will never perform any task that is actually related to AI and machine learning. Maybe just because the company is not ready for that. And the second reason why there's so much misconception around data science is connected to HR, so human resources. And the reason for that is that there are so many buzzwords flying around the data science space. And so human resource representative, they sometimes name positions in the wrong way. And so maybe they are hiring or they are looking for a business intelligence analyst but they actually call that position a data scientist and this is maybe also kind of a cheeky way because they know that data scientist role is very popular now and so this is a way for them to actually attract more and more talents so now that we understand why there is so much misconception around uh, data science i'm gonna use the uh, framework that is called the data science uh, pyramid of needs to try to understand what is really needed in the data science space and that will be the base for us to understand 
understand what it really means to be a data scientist. Okay, so basically this is the famous uh, data science pyramid of needs. And this was built by Monica Rogatti, who obviously uh, took inspiration from the more famous Maslow's uh, pyramid of needs. And so basically the framework explains that it is impossible to perform any task that is at the top of the pyramid without first taking care of the foundation and what it really is at the base of the pyramid. So let's go through the pyramid to really understand what is really needed within the data science space. So at the very bottom, you have collect. So we obviously need to collect some data in order to use it. And when this is done, for example, using uh, different sensors or different uh, machines. And the key here is to try to understand what is available to collect as a data and also so what is really needed for a specific business. And to give you a very practical example of this first step within the pyramid, we can actually use the Apple Watch. So when you start a training and uh, the Apple Watch turns into a fitness mode, you will see that there are some green sensors that switched on. And these are actually the sensors that are needed to take your data. Then the second step within the pyramid is called move and store because obviously when you collect data, you need to store it into a system or a specific data center. And so when businesses start to collect a lot of data about their customers, about the performance or their business in general, this is when we start to talk about big data, which is such a popular and famous topic within media as well. And so again, if you use the Apple Watch as the example, the move and store step is happening when Apple collects your data and then store it into the iCloud. And then if you move up into the pyramid, the next step is called explore and transform. And this is basically when we have to clean the data because maybe there are a lot of uh, errors, mistakes, something that is wrong that needs to be transformed. And this is a very underrated aspect within data science because maybe it's just the most boring one. And if we again use the Apple Watch as an example, I can start the fitness mode within the app, uh, maybe as a swimming session. Well, actually I'm just running. So, you know, it's my mistake, but if we don't correct this type of data, then the data that will be stored in the iCloud will seem that I was swimming when I was actually running. Then the next section within the pyramid is called aggregate and label. And this is where business intelligence and analytics come into play. So this means basically creating charts and dashboards to try to come up with uh, very interesting insights that uh, will also try to answer some business questions. So within the health app of the Apple Watch, this is shown where basically when you browse around, you see all these charts and KPI and different metrics telling you everything about your training, telling you everything about your health in general. And only when all of these steps are taken care of, then we can actually start talking about learn and optimize. And this is when the first kind of simple machine learning models are made and all of this is done to predict the future. And so again, using the Apple Watch as our example, the app can use simple machine learning models to try to use data from the past that um, has, has been collected from past trainings to try to predict when is the best time for me to train based on my uh, performance overall. And now what is really covered in the media is the very top of the pyramid and that is called AI and deep learning. So deep learning algorithms can be regarded both as a sophisticated and mathematically complex evolution of machine learning algorithms. And the field has been getting loads of attention lately and actually for good reason, because recent developments have led to results that were not thought to be possible before. And again, using the Apple Watch as an example, we maybe will see in the future that Apple can guide the workouts using pose estimation. And essentially, it is a way to capture a set of coordinates for each joints like arms, head and torso, which is known as a key point that can describe a pose of a person. So pose estimation can be deployed on the reference image image, which in this case is ourselves while we train, to basically gather data and guide the user with 
that data. And this is done with the goal of maintaining the correct posture during uh, workout exercises, for example. And this is actually not the highest priority for a data scientist and in, within data science space in general. And this is why it is at the very top of the pyramid. So now that we understood what is really needed in the data science space, let's try to see what the data scientists actually do. And let me try to explain here. Obviously there is absolutely no way a company can build a powerful machine learning application if they haven't nailed down the basic foundation and needs within the pyramid. Because if the data is rubbish, the ML model will be rubbish as well, right? And so I, being a data scientist in a company that hasn't taken care of those basic needs and foundation within the pyramid, means that actually the data scientists will need to take care of the whole pyramid, which is obviously not ideal. On the other hand, being a data scientist within a company that is actually taking care of all those sections of the pyramid would be the ideal situation, because that means that the data scientists can literally focus on a specific section and a specific task. So for example, data collection via instrumental sensors is all handled by a software engineer, then the cleaning and building data pipelines are for data engineers, and then data scientists will therefore focus only on analytics, and at the very top of the pyramid, AI and deep learning will be the remit of research scientists, which could also be backed by machine learning engineers. And so in summary, as you can see, there is no one definition of data scientist, but the data scientist role and uh, responsibilities really depends on which of the needs a company has already taken care of. And in case you are considering data science as maybe a next step of your career, then what you might want to do is to check the company that you're interested in and check maybe on LinkedIn if they have different people working in the data space or if you're actually there is none and so you're gonna be maybe one of the first. Because for example, if the company has um, already some uh, data engineers, that means already that half of the pyramid is covered. And so as a data scientist, you will focus on the basically the top of the pyramid, so more kind of AI machine learning tasks. So guys, I really hope that this video can provide you with a bit more clarity around the data scientist role. And if you feel like this video can be useful to you or maybe a friend, feel free to uh, put a like, subscribe and maybe share it. Well, thank you so much that you made it until the very end of this video. Ciao for now and see you in the next one. So basically, collect, so basically, store, so, <laughs> that is called artificial neural intelligence. No, networks.